In this video, we're going to talk about wash bays, what they are, how they work, all the different kinds, and how you apply them when it comes to wastewater management. Hey Mark, how are you? Good Tim, how are you going? Until recently I hadn't really heard of what a wash bay is. Let's start with that. What are they and how do they work? Okay, let's start with the most simplest one, mm -hmm. a car wash. Um, so a lot of people would have taken their car to a local um, hand car wash. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that's basically an area where a car would sit. It obviously gets washed down. All sorts of soaps and detergents yeah, and processes. Um, and it's a platform where we can then capture that water and treat it prior to discharge. Okay, good. So a wash bay, but that sounds like a quite a permanent thing. Is, are there different kinds of wash bays? Absolutely. So for those uh, companies that are um, con either on the move, so after a couple of years they uh, expand, grow, and they're looking at moving premises, Right. Um, a, a fixed wash bay where they've got a lot of assets tied in can't be moved, obviously. Right. So we've developed a portable wash bay, which is a, uh, a platform where you can uh, drive a car onto, wash it down, we can still capture the water, process it, etc. But if they do decide to move, they, it's like a giant Meccano set, they can wrap it all up and, and take it with them to the next location. Fold it up, stick it in your pocket, off you go. They can probably, actually put probably, it in their boot. Yeah, probably <laughs> bigger than that. Now yeah. there are different, uh, I want to say different sizes as well. Yes. Uh, the car size makes a lot of sense to me. Yes. What's sort of your big and your small when it comes to this? The smallest we've ever had is a wheelchair, uh, which right. sounds quite um, strange. But uh, any organisation that is washing down equipment uh, needs a wash bay or, or an approved wash bay. Um, and we can go basically right up to large um, trucks. Um, we've built the uh, portable wash bays in modules. So basically okay. we can customise depending on the size of the vehicle. Um, so we're not limited to a particular size. Okay, good. And arguably you could do one for two cars or two buses or... Correct. Yep. Okay, good. Now you've spoken about collecting the water, so it makes sense that these are sort of closed systems from a water point of view and you're using detergents and whatever else you're using to wash. What are the processes that actually clean the water, which presumably happen under or around the wash bay itself? Yeah, well the obligation is that um, the owner of the business um, that has the, the wash bay um, con conforms to uh, strict trade waste criteria. And one of the biggest uh, aspects of that is the removal of free oils from the water. Um, so uh, the water will then continue on to a, a treatment plant and it, it continue to be cleaned prior to discharge. But the most important one is the, any free oils that may drip onto the surface from a car or the vehicle or right. the plant equipment, etc. Right, no, that makes sense. So there's a cleaning system that basically makes everything uh, clean enough to send out into the trade water network. Uh, are there any other, I want to say, solids or what have you that need to be removed or maintained, any filters, anything like that? Yeah, if we start from the beginning, um, the water is captured into a, a tank, an mm -hmm. in-ground tank, if we're talking about a fixed wash bay that is. Right. Um, and typically the water will pass through a silt tray. So that's your first defence and the silt tray will capture a lot of that silt and debris. Sort of large particle yeah, type stuff. a bit of rubbish every now and again, maybe a little bit of plastic or whatnot would fall onto the ground. So we're protecting the environment from um, sludge, rubbish, etc. It will then, um, once it falls into the collection pit in the ground, we give it uh, at least one hour retention time. So that one hour enables the soaps and detergents to break free. And you're probably asking yourself, what does that mean? <laughs> um, a detergent or soap, what it does is it enables the water molecules and the oil molecules to come together and join temporarily. Okay. Um, and that's why when you wash your car, the soap helps to take off the, the dirt or oils, etc. And it's important that um, users use a break-free detergent. So after about 15 minutes, that bond between the oil molecule and the water molecule breaks, uh, and enabling the oil to uh, be separate from the oil, uh, separate from the, from water. the water, sorry. Sure. It's like when you put oil and water in a jar and you shake it. And after a while? It's, it starts to separate. Right, right. So that principle is happening in the pit in the ground. Um, and it helps then when the water or oily water passes through the separator that that nice easy transition can occur and we can uh, easily remove the oil from the water. Okay, good. That makes uh, more sense to me. You have spoken a couple of times about something that I would call compliance, which is to say 
whether a business is washing a wheelchair or a bus, there are certain, I want to say, legal uh, implications here. Can you talk to me about the rules and regulations and who enforces them? The organisations that enforce it would be your local council or water authority. Um, some of the requirements are that the, uh, the wash bay has to be non-permeable. I think that's how you say that word. <laughs> uh, or non-porous. Um, so okay. You, so it can't arguably can't kind of uh, dissolve through the wash bay and go out into the water table or something like correct, that. Correct. Yes. Okay. So yeah, you yeah. have to be able to retain that water. Right. And typically the perimeter of the wash bay has to be bunded. So if you have a bunded, bunded. What does that mean? Bunded means uh, well, uh, it's like your con your a bund is a, a a section you would put around the wash bay, so like, it's like a, a speed boundary hump. or something. Yeah, a speed hump is typically okay. a, a form of a. So keep everything in. Correct. So yeah. if there is a spill, the bund, because it's slightly higher than the uh, the right. wash bay itself, will right. help to contain that spill. Right. Uh, in the unlikely event that there a spill occurs. Right. So first of all, the, the wash bay must be bunded. Um, and in some areas, the wash bay is required to have a roof over it. And if it doesn't, then you have to look at a stormwater management system. So Right, because then you don't want arguably rainwater and what have you mixing up with whatever has gone on in the wash. That's correct. You're, uh, we don't want to be flooding the sewer network with rainwater. So we need to be able to differentiate when it's raining to send that rainwater to the stormwater system. And when we're washing a car, send that wastewater to the sewer system. Okay, good to know. Thank you so much. For those of you who'd like to find out more and figure out exactly which kind of wash bay, exactly which size of wash bay might be right for you, please visit us online through bullbeckenviro.com.au. Also, feel free to send us an email and give us a call with your complicated questions. It's a complicated issue <laughs> and we'd be more than happy to help uh, answer your questions and figure out what we can do to help you through.